Hi smart people, my name is Christopher and this is Subtech Online, the channel where we keep learning. Today I'm going to share with you reviews on visualization of data in Google Data Studio. These principles will apply to all visualization tools. If you find my videos helpful and interesting, please consider subscribing. Let's begin. Okay, welcome once again, looking at Google Data Studio, data visualization, looking at the types of charts we have. Uh, so in Google Data Studio, we have a variety of charts. There is a variety of charts, but it depends the data you're visualizing. That's the type of chart you use. So starting with a column uh, bar chart, this one is used to compare two or more values as we shall see ahead on the principles how we can always use them then uh, also the line chart uh, which is used to compare the changes and visualize the trend uh, this one looks at data when the trend is changing variables uh, over time then the scorecards which display a summary of single metric so this is always at the top of your report so we find that it summarizes all the data you have in your report, which is followed by the charts, it tells the story. Then we look at the tables. Tables display your data in a, a grid of rows and columns. Google Maps goes ahead and even includes the heat maps. So you can use the heat maps to show different kinds of trends. Uh, then we have the bar heat map in the table. This one you just click on the table and you go to the style and style it the way you feel like you need. So visualizing the dimension comparisons, looking at that, which is done uh, like this, but you don't have to use more than six colors, just to make it simple. Uh, then looking at the tree map, uh, which shows your data organized into dimension hierarchies like how we are seeing here, Shasha Direct, uh, it goes on diminishing in that way. Uh, the bigger shows the higher measurement dimensions. Uh, then uh, next looking, okay, uh, looking at the geo maps, which visualizes how the measurements varies across the, the, ge the geographical areas. Uh, this one helps us to look at data which is dimensionally to the geographical areas it can be. Now, uh, looking at that pie chart, which is useful when comparing a few data points with relative to large differences in the portions between the values. And this one should normally be when you have a few dimensions to look at comparing. Uh, if it is too much like how we are looking at this in the picture, it should be used in the bar chart or in uh, something related to that. Then we have the bullet chart, which gives us uh, a way to quickly see how we, we hit our performing target. So you, time, you have a target and uh, it will always help you to benchmark uh, on your targets. If it is hit, how much percentage you have. So next I'm going to look at, we are going to look at the 10 data visualization tips. Here we're going to look at the bad and the good examples. So when you're choosing a chart to tell your story, uh, looking at uh, the bad example on the left, you see that the colors used, the contrast is not visual enough, like how it is on the right. It is the same data, but uh, one is visible than the other. Uh, then also, when you're choosing a story to tell using your charts, you, you, when data is too much to compare, uh, we always go for bar charts than uh, the pie chart. So it depends the data or the measurements you're having, you're looking at. And always we try to use the uh, same color with bar charts, it becomes simpler and more. Uh, then also when you look at uh, the two charts, uh, the, the chart on the left, uh, its heading, the title is not describing a lot, and it becomes hard for someone to understand what you, 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 you're visualizing about. But uh, looking at the example on the, on the right, uh, it briefly describes what the chart is all about, though you're not supposed to uh, describe exactly in your chart. 
Then uh, the second one is keep it simple. So we find that the chart on the left, the bad example, it, you can never interpret that. It becomes hard for someone who has not visualized that data to interpret it. But it becomes simpler to interpret when it is put in the bar. It can be stuck, yes, because data is much. You're looking at many dimensions, but try to keep it simple. Uh, looking now at uh, uh, our scorecards. So when you look at the two scorecards, the bad example, there is a lot of description, which can be summarized into like, when you look on the right, it is just a, a comparison of uh, 2019 versus 2018, which substitutes the other description, which was put on the left. Uh, there shouldn't be too much crowding of the words. So make sure that the dimensions of the scorecards are the same. Uh, then the fourth, use a single color to represent the same type of data. So when you look at the iOS, the two uh, comparisons done, the iOS and Android, we are just using the same color to describe the uh, Android and iOS different than how it is described on the left. You find that there are too much colors, which becomes hard for someone to interpret. Then number five. Uh, make sure that there is sufficient contrast between the colors. Try to differentiate from one dimension to another. Uh, it becomes easy to, it becomes visual when there is a difference in contrast. So when you look at the good example, it is the contrast is linear and visual than how it is on the left side. So try to make sure that there is sufficient of contrast, though you have used one color. Then number six, don't use more than six colors in a single layout. That one you should take it, never use many colors. Use labels, but don't over label. So uh, when you look at the crowded chart on the left, it is over crowded because of the labels. So there you don't need to include the labels, just include the table be below to represent the data. But the good example is on the right, just Make it visual, but don't include the labels. You can include the labels on another portion of the table than including them in the chart itself. Uh, still the same when you look at these bar, two bar charts. Uh, it becomes a good example on the right, including the labels. Uh, okay, uh, number eight, you add hierarchy to your data. Uh, there is... Uh, when you're making pages, you'll add pages on your, in your report. Make sure that they are in that hierarchy, such that if it is a summary, it comes on top, then the other details move to the other pages. Like when you check on the bad example, uh, the conversion of funnel and the user details, then conversions, then the general overview is the last page. So it is always is uh, better to have the summary, that is the general overview, have the user details, have the events, conversions, uh, like that, which is better. So let's always have it in a hierarchical model. Then number nine, create the correct data in order. Make sure always to arrange your data in either ascending or descending order. It becomes easy for to tell a story. Uh, like when you look at a good example, it becomes easy for you to tell that Samsung has always the most sessions than on the left side. So let's always... Uh, arrange our data either in descending or ascending order, such that it is easily used to tell a story. Uh, then last but not least, keep the charts and the graph headers simple and to the point. So when you check uh, our two graphs, uh, on the left, there is a lot of description. Uh, then we should avoid to use uh, static labels like how you see on the bad example. Uh, because every time you generate a report, you have to go back and change. So uh, let's try to be neat uh, on the headings. So the, the correct, the good example is just on point. The heading is brief and explaining what is taking place to the graph. Uh, thank you. Please consider subscribing uh, if you find the video helpful to you.